would automatically think that it wouldn't be as juicy inside, but it actually does the complete opposite to what I'm thinking. You want to squeeze that in there as I get stirring? Yeah. I'll have to remember before we bite into it. Remove the toothpicks. Yeah, exactly. Hello everyone and welcome to the show. I'm Jordan Scott and today on the show we have Wayne Howie. Wayne, how are you doing today? I'm doing very well, Jordan. Yourself? I'm doing well. So today we're doing uh, back to the basic, I guess you could say. Everyone always talks about the beer can chicken, so Wayne's going to show us his version of the beer can chicken. But before that, Wayne, why don't you fill us in on a little bit about yourself and how you got into the barbecue business? Um, well, uh, I think, uh, as I had said earlier, the, 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 the summer part of the barbecuing experience, I mean, uh, having family over, um, I love the smells and the barbecues going. Yep. Um, it, so many of the recipes on the green egg, or barbecues, or grills, all sorts of grills, are so easy. Um, a lot of times I've eaten the food and I thought, I wonder how much work went into that, but they're so easy. that yeah. They can be done in 10 or 15 minutes. You put it on the grill, you walk away, you have a couple beers with your friends, and it's great. Yeah, so it's definitely a more social thing for you. As definitely. It probably yes. is for people watching the show at home as well. So we look forward to learning some of your uh, recipes and starting off with this delicious looking beer can chicken. So what do we do to get started with that? Well, you're going to want to start with about a three to four pound uh, whole chicken. Um, and then uh, remove uh, any, any giblets that are inside of it or string. This one looks like it was abducted and kidnapped. <laughs> <laughs> We're free. Okay, We're yeah, doing we a good thing. Yeah. Free this chicken of its... Okay, so we have our chicken. Um, now, it's really this simple. The cavity of the chicken, you want to put a little bit of uh, kosher salt in there. Get that in there and then... Uh, so basically, you're just pushing that in the inside yep. to, is that, that does around. that help with flavor? Uh, yeah, the, the salt definitely brings up the flavor. I mean, okay. um, we'll, get a, we'll get a little bit of a rub in there as well. Um, I'll like usually put about two teaspoons of rub in there. Okay. Um, once you get the, uh, the vapor, uh, like the beer evaporating up through there, it'll, it'll take all those, all those juices and all those flavors up through the chicken breast. Okay. So, and then uh, what I like to do is, I love onions. Oh, so we're going to stuff it. Uh, yeah, we're going to put a couple onions in there. I can take that off yep. for you. This bird is cooperating. <laughs> All right, so there's the onions for you. Yeah, we're just, we're just going to put maybe half a handful in there. Okay. That kind of helps with the flavor. Yep, absolutely. Now, lie the chicken down. Don't try to, don't try to get the olive oil and the rub on the chicken with it on the beer can because it's awkward and you just get the, you get the seasoning all over the place. So we're just going to take a little bit of olive oil and we're going to help this guy get a suntan, girl, I guess, get yep, a suntan. Yep. Get a suntan, <laughs> yeah. bath it up. So once you put that on, I'm assuming that's to help stick more spices that yep, you're going to put on the outside it, of the chicken. It's going to seal in the f flavor and it's going to help the uh, spices stick to it. Oh, perfect. So it actually helps with the inside spices that you put so it doesn't come. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Okay. So then we're going to get some on the other side. All the legs, the wing tips. Basically, just get it all over the chicken. Yep, just get it all over the chicken, all the little crevices, as much as you can get on there. Okay. The more you get on there, it's going to help the rub. Now, I, I just put tons of rub on. <clears throat> I don't think you can really go wrong with this. I okay. mean, a lot of people are going to peel the skin off anyways for, for their uh, dietary health uh, reasons. So The skin is my favorite part. It's my favorite part, too. <laughs> I mean, I always wished it was on the menu somewhere. Yeah. Maybe I would buy can it, I get a bowl of skin with that, there's please? There's just so much fat in the skin, though, that yeah. uh, you really want to... And when this chicken comes off, it is so uniformly white and so tender, you're going to forget all about your, right. your uh, enjoyment of the skin. So we got lots so of rub on there. So these are actually going to get right through to the actual chicken breast. Absolutely, yeah. So if you don't even need to eat the skin, it just kind of helps crisp it no, up No, it's going you're going to get that flavor right into the breast. So lots and lots of rub on there. So as far as the chicken goes with the spicing, is there a specific kind of spice that you like to use for this? Um, I, I got a collection of Dizzy Pig stuff. I mean, okay. not, to, not to put a plug in for an individual brand, but I think they've got a really, really nice selection for poultry and fish and beef and pork. I mean, okay. they're, you know, the, some of their spices are, are, are really, uh, have a lot of bite to them and some of them are mild. Um, I think a lot of science has gone into the spices right. for different meats. So, I mean, you could probably just pull off what you have in, in, your, in your cabinet, but I mean, these are ready to go. You sprinkle them on there, and they win every time. They win every time yeah. with these. There's so. no going wrong with those spices, no matter which one you pick. Absolutely. So, so then uh, the second part we're going to do here is prepare the beer can. Um, really important when you hear a beer can chicken or a beer chicken, 
Do not use a bar, uh, a bottle in the uh, in the green egg or any grill for that re reason. Oh, okay, that's a really good point. Remember, you, you've got a, you know, a liquid that's getting up a couple, you know, 100 and something degrees uh, Celsius, you know, three or 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So you don't, you want to be very careful with it. Uh, you don't want it totally full. You want to bring it down to about three quarter, maybe okay. or about half. And, and how are we planning on getting that down? Well, usually what I'll do is I'll dump it, but just for environmental reasons, right now I'm just gonna just gonna get rid well, of it. Well, I kind of wish you brought two now, then Wayne, but that's fine. <laughs> yeah, I didn't bring it up for you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Perfect. So, so what's your flavor of beer? Obviously, it doesn't matter. Kind of well, whatever their preference I actually is. Wouldn't, I, I wouldn't pick a dark beer to drink, but I really find the dark beers, they, they get more flavor gets into the into the poultry. Oh, so, so you would use those in the I would the use chicken. this opposed to the beer that I would normally drink. So oh, okay. Uh, I like a lighter beer, but uh, Rickard's is really nice. I mean, all the, all the darker beers are really, really good. So Perfect. Another part I like to do is like to ventilate the top of the can, and you want to be like super careful doing this. Yeah, no. Maybe kidding. do this before you drink the beer out of it. Yeah. Might be a bad idea. <laughs> safety first, always. Yeah, always safety first. So what you're doing is putting holes in the top of the tin of the can, and yeah. what is the purpose of doing that? Well, as the uh, as the liquid in the can boils, it's going to evaporate and then come up through the bird and condense on the inside of it, okay. and then permeate the flesh, and it'll get into the you know the, the larger the holes in the top, the more it's able to breathe out. Okay, so, so the more holes, the better. But now, you're going to see a lot of a lot of things on on in the grocery store that you can perch the chicken up. A lot of guys will say just throw in the can and use the the drumsticks the to balance it. Yeah. But if you're going low and slow with the chicken, the meat, as you've experienced, is going to fall off the chicken. Yeah. So it's going to lose the it's going to lose all the tendons in that, and it's going to want to fall over on its own. Okay. So I uh, I just made a couple of um, of. Uh, mounts for them, which I'll put the, the beer can oh, on. so that fits perfectly. So yep. did you purchase this? No, or? I just, just made this oh, in my shop. Oh, you actually made it. <laughs> yeah, Perfect. After the first Are you selling those on the side then? No, no, <laughs> no. A after a chicken falls over and spills beer all over your coals and you're going out to dinner with your wife, instead of having beer can chicken, you're going to find a way to keep the chicken upright. Yeah, I hear ya. Chicken has a natural tendency of lying down for whatever yes. reason it is. So then we're going to just plunk that over the beer can, like so. Perfect. And then uh, what I like to do is I like to tuck the wings in a little bit because they like, they'll, they'll tend to crisp on the outside. Okay. So we just tuck them back a little bit on the inside of the bird. Awesome. Looks like your next show might be Dragon's Den with this invention. No, I think there's, <laughs> there's plenty of them out there. This is a really simple thing. I mean, uh, you can, I've seen everything from, you know, $5 wire baskets to, uh, to uh, you know, a wire unit that looks like it's it's cradling baby Jesus. So I mean, yeah. it's, it's this is great. Like Perfect. this is nice and functional, nice and easy. It's made of steel, so it doesn't deteriorate. Really good. We're ready for the grill, pretty much. All right. So do we need? An, what what do we have this? What's this here? This is a mixture of olive oil and the rub. Okay. And what we'll do is because we're going to put this on and uh, have a desirable internal temperature of about 175, 180 degrees, we're going to have time to check it every half an hour okay. and then baste the chicken. And because uh, we have a nice human environment in there with the egg and the water tray below it, the, it's going to be very receptive to the basting. Okay. It's going to keep it, going to hold it. It's not going to dry out. So you're going to keep all those juices in the chicken. Okay, so we're just going to keep applying within the cooking period of time. Yeah, every about okay. half hour, maybe to an hour. You're gonna, you, you know, you're, you're going you're gonna to have about an hour and 15 minutes to an hour and a half cook time, depending on your temperature. Okay. So, uh, you know, every half hour probably be perfect. That sounds good. Well, yep. let's get it on the barbecue then. Okay, so... We're we'll going to grill set at uh, roughly 250 to 300. Uh, you can cook chicken as fast as you want, as long as you get up to a, a respectable temperature. Slower is much better, so I like to cook at 250. Uh, right now we have it at 300, so at 300 right now, you're probably looking at about an hour's cook time. Okay. So we'll just burp the egg so we don't get flames shooting across the uh, patio. Remove that. And we have a, a pan in the bottom filled with water. Uh, sometimes I'll just dump the beer in there that I didn't drink. <coughs> and then we perch this guy up and be mindful of the top of the egg because you've got your thermometer in there oh, and you can okay. plunk it down onto the bird and knock it over. So we'll just back it up a little bit. Eggs have a natural tendency for a lot of the heat to come up through the back of it. So you might want to rotate the egg every half an, or at, at the bird every half an hour. Oh, okay. Because you're going to get yep. more heat on one side or the other. Right. You'll be able to tell by the way the bird's cooking when that happens. So see if it needs to be rotated yeah. or not. Yeah, and, and as you can see, normally a, a lot of people will just put it on the, on the can and put the legs out, get it stabilized that way. But you're really down. relying on the chicken to balance right. itself, right? right? So 
Um, I just prefer to get it nice and stable and hopefully not knock it over when I put the lid down. So we're pretty right. much ready to go there. All right, well, we'll get that cooking then. Yep. And in the meantime, we're going to check out what we have going on for sides, and we will be back. Thank you, Wayne. You're very welcome, Jordan. Thank you. And here we are with Shayna, who is going to be over, going over the appetizer that we have going on with the beer can chicken today. So Shayna, what are we getting started with today? Well, Jordan, I asked if we could start with the pitcher margaritas, but they told me to keep it PG today. So oh, that's <laughs> disappointing. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. We're getting started with another crowd pleaser, uh, my skillet spinach dip. Um, so we're going to start off with a cast iron pan, and we're going to oil it up with olive oil. Um, then open a can of pre-made biscuit dough, uh, roll them into balls. Perfect. and place them around the edge of the pan. So they go in raw. They go in raw. Perfect. Yep. And uh, if you could help me out by just spreading a little bit of garlic butter on each one. On the actual yep, dough on top here? Of each dough. All right. And then I'm going to get started. I have uh, half a brick of cream cheese softened here. And I'm going to add uh, half a cup of mayonnaise. How am I doing so far? Do you go heavy on the garlic butter? Oh, or? yeah. There's never, never too much garlic butter. Oh, yeah. That's true. And then I'm going to add a half a cup of sour cream. About a quarter cup of chopped green onions. Half a cup of parm. Give that a quick mix here. Now, can you whisk this, or do you usually use a blender? A, a, a blender would be ideal, but as long as the cream cheese is soft enough, you can do it by hand. Yeah, okay, that works good then. And I'm going to add in about a tablespoon of crushed garlic. Yum. You can add more, depending on your preference. And if you would help me out and dump that spinach in there sure. for you. Sure. So I've got about a cup of uh, frozen spinach I've thawed out and drained the the moisture out of. Um, you could also use four cups of baby spinach and just chop it by hand. And chop it by hand. Okay, that works. I so this is kind of the quicker way if someone's kind of having yeah. a dinner party in a rush. I prefer this. It's easier to dip. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Very good. And, That's uh, perfect. I've got a, t a teaspoon of seasoning salt. If you could dump that in for me. Mm-hmm. Just want to make sure that well blended. Don't want any chunks of cream cheese left in there. I'd be okay with the chunks of cream cheese, but... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I've got a half a cup of cheddar here. I'm going to dump most of it in and just reserve a little bit for the topping. So there's cheddar that's going to go on top of this. Mm-hmm. Nice. Looking good so far. Are we adding this cheese as well? No, we're going to reserve that for the top as well. Oh, okay. So... Now this pan, can it go in the barbecue or in the oven? It can go or in the barbecue or the oven. Okay, yep. great. So what's great about the cast iron pans is they're really versatile. You can go straight from the oven to the, to the dinner table. No need to change it. Yeah, that's nice for sure. So we're just going to scoop a little bit in the middle here, just so we get to the, the top of the dinner rolls. Now are these dinner rolls going to get bigger as it bakes? Yeah, so you yeah. need to leave room for it to expand? Mm -hmm. And if you want to top it off with the... Am I putting the cheese over the dough and the... Uh, I usually do it around the center. It kind of spreads out. Okay, over the, perfect. Over the dinner rolls. Just like this? Yep. Load it on there. Load it on. Okay, here we go. Perfect. Okay, and then a little cheddar just for some extra flavor. There's a garnish. A little bit of color. A little bit of color on there. Can't go wrong with a little color in your life. All right. It's as easy as that. Perfect. Uh, so you can put it in a preheated oven at 375 for about 18 to 20 minutes. Okay. Or you could also put it on the green egg. Perfect. That sounds great. Thank you, Shayna. Thanks. All right, we're back everybody and I've got my garlic bread here that we prepped 
And now we're back with Wayne, and let's check on the chicken. How's it doing, Wayne? Uh, we're just going to check on the chicken by burping the egg a little bit. And uh, Now, what does it mean to burp the egg? Well, when the uh, egg is open quickly and oxygen rushes in, you can get a flame front come out the front of it, which oh. is a little dangerous. So okay. It's always very important when you open up the egg to just uh, burp it a little bit. Okay, that's a really good tip for us. So uh, when we're checking the chicken, we're going to go into the, uh, the meaty part of the breast. And recommended cooking temperature for chicken is around 165, 170. I like to uh, get it up to about 175, 180 to get rid of the little little veins and stuff in it. Yep. And right now we're at about uh, 155 in the deep parts. So we got a little bit more time yet to go. Okay, perfect. So what do we have sitting over here then? Um, about every uh, half an hour you want to baste the chicken to keep the uh, the environment nice and moist for the for the uh, breast. Okay. And we also have uh, water in a pan in the bottom to act more like a bit of a humidor for chickens, I guess. So. Uh, uh, once we, uh, we, we, every time we check the chicken, quickly baste the breast. Okay. And in the uh, mixture is uh, olive oil, and uh, you can choose like a chicken based uh, uh, rubbing uh, spice like uh, okay. Dizzy Pig poultry. This, this, oh, okay. So this just case, basically yeah. whatever yep. you preference, you can stick in there with the olive oil, and then you brush it on yep. every half hour. Yep. Okay, perfect. So are we going to brush some of that on yep, right we'll now? Yep, we brush some of that on awesome. now, literally. So basically you're covering the entire outside of the chicken with this mixture that you have? Yeah, and we'll keep, uh, keep attention to keeping a little bit extra on the, uh, the smaller parts that have a tendency to get a little crispy. So that helps keep everything moist yep. and uh, not overcooked? Yeah, and then the spices will permeate the, uh, the skin of the chicken. Awesome. And make it nice and tasty. Perfect. So we do have a little bit more time with the chicken to be cooked, so why don't we put this garlic bread on and get it started with the chicken here. Can I go ahead and do yep, that, or did you absolutely. want to do it? Perfect. Stick that on the grill. Okay, now let's check out the other sides for this dish. Okay, and we're back with Shayna. Shayna, what do we have going on for a side for the beer can chicken today? Okay, we're going to do my chickpea salad. Ooh, so nice. We're starting off with three cans of chickpeas that okay. I've rinsed and drained. Perfect. And uh, I'm going to get you to chop up these cherry tomatoes, if you could right. just cut them in half for me. So lengthwise or uh, lengthwise? Lengthwise, yep. perfect. And I'm putting them in here. You are. Perfect. And uh, I'm going to start peeling this cucumber. So the reason we're doing this is just so uh, they can marinate in the dressing and it can really get the full flavor in there. So how many, I see you have more grape tomatoes over here. How so many of these? three pints total. Three pints total into this bowl. Okay. I'm going to do uh, two full English cucumbers. Seems like a very fresh salad we have going on here today. It is. It's very fresh. Lots of flavor. Full of protein. If you've got any vegetarians coming over for dinner, it's a, it's a perfect great, thing. Great main for them as well. Awesome. Good to put the rest of these ones in that you, you have yep, chopped okay. up. So these are chopped the exact same way I chopped them, lengthwise and in half. Nice and colorful. Okay, and I'm going to continue cutting the second cucumber. If you wouldn't mind putting in these red onions. Okay. So it's about half a large red onion uh, that I've finely diced. Perfect. So if we do have people that don't like red onion, maybe the flavor's a little bit too strong for them, is there another substitute that they can use in this salad? Uh, you could use green onions. It would give a bit of a different flavor, but... Okay. You prefer the red? I prefer the red, personally. It yeah. gives a good color scheme. Okay, and if you could put this uh, three quarters cup of cr uh, crumbled feta. Crumbled feta. Perfect. Okay, and if you want to give it a quick stir to get it all mixed up for sure. you. How's it looking there? Looking very good. Okay. Nice and easy too. And the great thing about this salad is it's better the earlier on you make it so it has time to marinate and get more flavor so you can have it all ready before you even start your meat. Okay, so you're saying that we're going to put a dressing on this that's going to kind of marinate everything? Well, yeah, and then we're going to get started with that dressing right okay, now, actually. Perfect. 
Okay, let's do it. So what do we have here? I have six tablespoons of lemon juice and six tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, preferably as high quality as you can get. Um, I've got three tablespoons of balsamic. Now, is this balsamic the, just a store-bought or did you make that one yourself? Uh, just a store-bought. Just a store-bought yeah. one? And I've got uh, three, t three tablespoons of, of maple syrup. Maple syrup. syrup. Yeah. So, so a little bit of a sweet flavor to go yeah, in with Yeah, we've got a bit of every flavor in here. We've yeah. got the, the tartness of the lemon, the tartness of the balsamic vinegar, and then the sweetness of the maple syrup to balance okay, it Okay, so out. that makes for a good flavor. And then um, I've got uh, three teaspoons of Dijon here. Would you say Dijon would be the only kind of mustard that they should use in this? Because I know there's yeah, just a Yeah, it's a very distinct flavor, yeah. so you wouldn't really want to sub you it out. You don't really want to switch it up, eh? And then I've got one tablespoon of dill here. Okay, and if you would, wouldn't mind just going ahead and giving that a skin. Yep. So I'm whisking till it's all mixed together. Yeah. Is there a certain way it should look, or you just kind of... As long as the dill's all mixed in and it's not sticking to the side of the bowl, you should okay. be good to go. Okay, it looks good. So if you just want to pour it over the top of the salad there. Pour it over. Perfect. Give it a nice mix there. Looks awesome. And again, sometimes I make a big batch of this because it makes a great lunch. Um, if you add a little chicken to it, you can up that protein. Yeah, it looks like it would be pretty filling, so. It is, yeah, the, the, the chickpeas are full, full of uh, fiber, full of protein, so it's a really solid meal. Makes, uh, makes a good, healthy one as well. All right, so we're all good to go with that. Perfect, thank you so thank much, Shana. Mm -hmm. Welcome back to the show, everybody. We've got our side salad here looking very delicious and colorful. And we have the grill going with our garlic bread and our beer can chicken. How's that going, Wayne? Well, we'll just check it here by prepping the egg first. Very important. And then uh, our bread looks a nice golden brown looks and our delicious. chicken's looking good. Uh, we've already checked the temperature. and It's a nice, safe 180 degrees at the, at the deepest part of the breast. So it's pretty much ready to come off. Ready to come off? Good. I can't wait. I'm hungry already. So we'll, uh, we'll take the skillet off first to make a little room. The, the chicken can be a little unwieldy to deal with and perched up on that little mount. So now, you must keep in mind too, because there's a can half full of beer in the bottom, um, you're dealing with uh, several hundred degrees uh, of a liquid there. So don't, uh, don't be shy, get that over to your plate. Okay, yeah. And definitely uh, don't want to rush that process then. No, definitely not. So now we're just going to pull the chicken off the mount that it has. Do you want to push that down with the spoon? Not with your hands, yeah. Let's see if I push can it down. Yep. Here. There we go. And we'll just uh, save that to move that out of the way. All right. Nice two person job going on here. It's looking good. Oh, it looks delicious. Yep. So now we'll uh, cut a nice piece of that breast off. Sure, she looks good. Oh yeah, it's just falling right oh, apart. Beautiful. Nice and perfect, and a nice uniform white color throughout. Uh, no pink near the bone. It's pretty much perfect. I don't think it's any better than that. Oh, well, that's what we like to hear. So I can actually see how moist it is inside oh, yeah, the chicken. Yeah. So I well, can the, tell it's going to be tasty. Yeah, the beer floats up through the chicken and uh, keeps it nice and moist. And uh, I mean, I don't think it gets much better than that. Right on. Well, let's stick some on a plate for myself. I may as well try it while I'm here, right? All right, I'm going to have a little bit of salad with this. And of course, I'm going to go for some of this. I guess I can just scoop it out. And dip. Oh, well, that looks really good. Oh, it does, doesn't it? This plate looks like a perfect summertime barbecue plate there, people. For a four-year-old. <laughs> well, my portions aren't that big, but we'll wait till after the show for that. All right, grab this fork from you, give her a try. See how we did, or you did, I guess we should say. It was all me. It was all you, wasn't it? Yeah, I was much. just here. Mm-hmm. Bravo. Can taste a little bit of that sleeman in there, a little yeah. bit of spice. We've got it going on here on my plate. May as well give the salad a try. Mm -hmm. Very fresh, very good. And of course I saved the appetizer for last, but 
Why not? Mm-hmm. It all tastes delicious, right? Glad you enjoyed it. All right. Thank you, everybody, for watching, and we'll be back next time.